So the next, we're gonna look at the layup. A layup is a shot that's happening very close, right around this area. The block is right here. It's the big, it literally looks like a painted block. And there's one on each side of the court. Now there's two different ones, that's another topic. That's the block and you see the charge circle. So when we get into this area, whether through a post up or some sort of dribble, you have attacked the D and you've got into this area, you're underneath the rim, we say, and you're in a really good location for either a dunk. I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you girls are mean dunkers. Take it easy on the rims out there. And if you're not dunking yet, that's cool. You probably will be by June, uh, but you can do a layup from here. And you should be making literally 100, not quite 100, maybe 98% of your layups, we'll say. And there's a couple markings on this backboard that really help you. So you see there's the, the very large actual metal frame of the glass. We call the backboard the glass. It is huge. There's a reason it is that big. It, it is intended for you to use the entire surface of that backboard. And if you become very good at basketball and you play at the next level, you start to develop the skills to use the top corners like Steph Curry and some other people with very nice touch. They call it a soft touch. If you drill the basketball off of that glass, you will miss. You're gonna go too far over the rim. So you don't have a soft touch. Sometimes you don't shoot the ball high enough and you kind of jam it. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we've got some great landmarks here. I'm gonna teach you how to use them, how to train your brain so that you never miss a layup again. And we're gonna break it down into some very easy steps. All right, so somebody was very thoughtful and they put this nice white box around our rim. And that's where we're gonna start. So we're gonna, I'm gonna be positioning myself and we'll show you that in a bit <clears throat> underneath the rim. But as I go through the shooting motion, my eyes are locked on the white corner right there. So I'll show you one more time. I literally don't stare at the rim when I'm doing a layup. I'm not looking at the rim because that's not where I'm shooting. I'm actually shooting off the glass at that white square. All right, so I want to hit that square right there on the money. Now that we have our target, we again, we're not staring at the rim unless we're dunking it. We're actually looking at our target on the glass. We do want to use the glass. It is our best friend. So we know where we want to hit, but how are we going to hit it? We're going to hit it in two ways. It needs to hit the glass high, and we've kind of already established a high spot. That's our target. And now we need to hit it softly. So I see my target. It's high on the glass. It's that white corner. And I need to hit it softly. If I hit it too hard, I overshoot. And that's a very common miss. If I don't go high enough with my layup, I jam my ball. All right, and I can probably say with 100% certainty, we're all guilty of missing layups, both because we've jammed, we've aimed too low, because we're looking at the rim and not high on the glass, or we've missed the layup too hard because we came in full speed and we didn't finish it softly. All right, so at your home net or your park, we're gonna use the block. I'm a right-handed player, so I'm just gonna be demonstrating right-handed but we should be doing the same drill sequence on both sides, all right? And I, I can show you guys left-handed at some point. Uh, if you don't have markings, what you probably wanna do is stand right underneath your rim and you wanna take one, two steps out and one step forward. And that's probably your block, all right? From here, we're in a really good scoring area. So we're just gonna start on our block all right, and again, I'm not square to the rim. I'm angled square to my target, which is high on the glass. All right, and I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna have a little bit of a bend in my hips. We're gonna cover shooting in another video, but I'm just gonna kinda have the ball comfortable in my pocket position, which we just talked about in triple threat, and I'm gonna bring the ball up, through my nose for the shooting. And again, we'll, we'll get more detail later, okay? So I'm in my shooting position, triple threat. My eyes are locked up on that box. And as I shoot it, I say to myself, 
high and soft. And that is my reminder to do it high and soft and actually go and do that. Just don't go through the motions. So high and soft. And I'm going to do about 10 of these, maybe 20 of these. Depends how much time you want. So if there's a lot of people around, maybe you want to say high and soft in your head. Okay, but it's, I see my target, I'm not rushing. High and soft, and you get it in. Maybe a little too soft even. So I would adjust that on my next one. Another thing to keep in mind, and we'll talk about this when we do purposeful practice, is don't rush through your reps. Every time you do a shot or a drill, it's one rep. And you need to think of each of those as its own individual practice. So never rush through a rep, really focus on what you're doing. So after you make 10 or more, stationary. There's no steps. All I'm doing is I'm bringing the ball up first, then I'm powering up underneath it, and I'm shooting high and soft into the glass. So there's no extra motion, there's nothing there. When we're comfortable, from there, we're gonna add some steps. Okay, you probably wanna So we are allowed to take two steps from when we pick up the ball. When we're attacking that rim, we pick up the ball, we're allowed two steps. Now in today's game, there's this uh, third step, I hate calling it that, it's more of a, a gather step, sometimes it's called the zero step, where as I do this, it's uh, boom, it kind of doesn't count as a step. We're just gonna go traditional two steps, and we're gonna train the body to take off on the proper foot and to get a little of that rhythm and timing down. As we move forward, always carry what we did in the stage before. So I'm gonna add a foot step. I'm gonna add one step to my layup, but I'm still gonna be in a low position. Eyes are up on my white corner. I'm exploding up with the ball, and I'm gonna add a knee drive now as well. So similar uh, ideas, and I'm just gonna slowly add in a few new ones. So now I'm not on my block. I've actually taken a step backwards. I'm still on an angle, and if you wanna get uh, exact, we're pretty well at about a 45 degree angle from the rim, okay? So I'm now low in this triple threat position. My eyes are up on my target. My hands are in shooting position. And when I'm shooting and doing a right hand layup, my right leg should also be in the air. So I'm gonna train my brain how to move and to jump where I don't have to think about it. So whatever hand is finishing, that knee is in the air. Now if you think back to one of our warm-up videos where we did the Statue of Liberties, we were already training that movement, flexing the core, and we're engaging. I'm very comfortable in this position now, all right? So I take a big step forward. It's gonna be on my inside leg. I'll show you it forward in a second. And as I step, I've lowered my hips, my eyes are up, and now the ball and my back knee are gonna drive up as high as I can, very athletically, and I finish the ball high and soft. We'll show you from a few different angles. So we just did one step where I'm starting that stepping with my inside foot. It's called the inside foot because it's closest, most inside to the rim. So I step and that is my jumping foot. I then explode up and you can see my mad vertical in that video. Believe it or not, I used to be a pretty good dunker. Now I don't know if you can even get a credit card under my feet. But we're gonna add a second step. So we no longer start with our inside foot. We want to set that foot up. That's our last foot. That's our plant to jump. So I step with my outside foot now. Two steps. We're going up hard to the rim. 
eyes are on the white uh, box. We're saying high and soft as we execute high and soft. I'm going to take even one more step back so that I'm jumping from where I've been training, just inside the block area. So before we add a dribble, we're actually going to break the rules a little bit and I'm going to go with three full steps and we're going to layer a dribble in after. It's easier to do it this way than going right to the finished product. So I'm going to break the rules and we'll take three steps. It's a high soft finish off the white box. It's an inside foot plant. It's everything we've just done. I'm going to add an extra step. The footwork here for me, for someone my size, is roughly about the three point line on a 45 degree angle. Roughly, I'm a three, it's three steps. So I can go left, right, left, and that's my perfect footwork for this right hand layup. Let's check it out. So final stage now that we've built up is the fourth one where we're going to be adding a dribble. So it's a right hand finish on this side. So I'm going to dribble one time with my right hand. Once I gather that dribble, I will take the one, two steps I've just trained and then I'm finishing it high and soft off of the white box. So my footwork is left, right, left. You might have to experiment. If you're a little bit shorter, if you're like 5'5 five five or, or a bit under, you might need four steps, maybe more. So play with your footwork, count it out. Once we master the rhythm, you'll never have to think about it again, okay? So I'm gonna take a right hand dribble with that first left foot step. That's then gonna, I'm then gonna gather it in front of my chest and I get one, two into my layup. So I'll show you a few of these. Just quickly before we do let you go for the weekend uh, and to practice all of this, we do want to touch on the left hand side. When we're this close, we want to actually shoot this with our left hand. Even if you're not left handed, it's, there's a few reasons. It's going to give you a nicer angle, it protects the ball, alright? And again, we need to be able to play the game of basketball with both hands, alright? So, exact same thing, I'm going to stare at my white spot. I'm just inside my block. Maybe I'm a little bit closer if this is my off hand or my weaker hand, okay? I'm then gonna load it under here. So I'm still in that triple threat. Instead of right hand, it's now my left hand. That ball comes up, the ball starts moving first, comes up through our nose, then I start moving up, and then I flick through the ball, and I try to reach up and touch and swipe that backboard. So I'm here, the ball starts up, 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 I'm reaching up, so that was a little, little too weak of a snap, let me adjust this time. So every, every rep is its own practice, every, it's always a chance to get better. So it's a high and soft, ball comes up first, and there we go. And last thing, the perfect layup, the most perfect layup you can do is a glass to mesh finish. That's where it doesn't touch the rim at all. Okay, and it did a little bit there. But a glass to mesh finish is the most ideal. How do we get that perfect finish? Well, it's a high soft finish every time. High and soft. How do we get that? We use comfortable footwork. 
where the body comes in and knows what to expect. And again, we build confidence through repeated success. So get out of the court, have some fun. The first little bit might be frustrating, fight through that, and then all you see is success.